Look how many things I can do at once. And where's Louie? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I have to tell him we miss him. So, um, and Richard, we've, we're missing some of our regulars, but welcome everyone who's here. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we are going to study about uh, a very colorful character named Alicia Ben Abuya. Oh. <laughs> I know him. Uh, you know him well. <laughs> Becky does too. Yeah. Becky knows him personally, I, I saw that sigh. <laughs> there was a wonderful novel about him. Yeah. Yes, he as a driven leash. leash. That's right. Welcome, Schneider. welcome. Come in. Come in. Schneider, yes. So, uh, before we move on to a new character and a new story, I will say that Ruth Calderon does have a second version of the story of Rabbi Shimon Bar. Bar Shimon Bar Yochai in the cave. Um, it's another version from the Jerusalem Talmud, the Yerushalmi, and she then creates a new story out of that. I made a decision to do something new just because I felt like, actually because of you, Susan, because you said to me, we really want to study more primary text. And uh, I just wanna make sure everyone uh, keeps themselves on mute while they're not talking, okay. And if we had gone to that other story, it's a very, very short primary text with, with more of Ruth Calderon's fantastic weaving of narrative. But for you, Susan, and for all of us, we're going to spend more time now learning the Gemara and first learning about this character, Alicia Ben Abuya, before we then go to the core story that Ruth Calderon will look at. So. Um, so today's class will be entirely in the Talmud text and we'll be sort of meandering through various texts about this character. Um, Elisha Ben Abuya was known as the Acher, the other. Oh, I realize I have to sit at this laptop because this is where I'm gonna share my screen from. Um, the teacher of Rabbi Meir, the one who um, who was such a great sage that he was uh, one of the Arba Shenichnesula Pardes, one of the four holy sages who had access to the deepest knowledge of Torah. So this refers to someone of the caliber of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva is one of the others. Then there's Ben Azai, Ben Zoma. These 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 high level sages um, who acts every level of Torah. So the, the Pshat, the Remez, the Drash, and the Sod, which were understood to be the simple, the interpret the simple text, the interpretation of the text, the symbolic nature of the text, and the mystical, most secretive, most esoteric level of Torah. And what happened to Elisha Ben Abuya? He left Jude. He, he became a, a, an apostate. He became a heretic. And so um, when we talk about mythical stories, we talk about stories that take on um, great symbolism. It's the character himself, Elisha or Acher, who symbolizes this question of can someone this great really leave Torah? Can someone who has strayed so far ever come back? Um, what do we now think about his teachings? Do we still listen to his teachings? Do we still learn his teachings? What made someone so great leave Jewish life? How could it be that you start at this level and you then deny it all? So we're going to uh, the other, right, right. We'll look at that also in one of the stories here. I'm sharing my screen. Give me a moment. Okay. And uh, I I chose not to. Uh, why is okay, this is? Here we go. Can't do two things at once. There we are. So now we can see all our little zoom squares, and you can see this. So today we'll see how many texts we get through. This is quite a booklet of of texts that I've given you. So we'll pick it up not next week, but the week after. And I have a feeling we'll do two weeks of learning like this, and then we'll read Ruth Calderon. <clears throat> um, okay, uh, let's just jump in. Let's jump in. How's that? 
uh, questions or comments before we start. You've read As a Driven Leaf. Has anyone else read I, that book? I love that book. It's been so, so many so years. You know, I, read it, I, I, I loved it so much. I, yeah. yeah. I used to, when I was on the circuit, the review circuit. The review circuit. <laughs> so for those who don't know, As a Driven Leaf is a sort of, what, would you call it historical fiction? What would I you call, call it? I call it a Calderon-esque yes. uh, <laughs> interpretation of the text, spinning it out into a, a terrific story. novel. Really, uh, yes, a story. What's that, Becky? It's what? I said, it, I mean, I would consider it a story. I mean, you know, it, 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 it's like a probably, you know, like it's a fictional, but it's historical. I mean, it's. Right. But it takes. Right. It brings this character to life. So we're going to begin with the question of what made Acher Acher? What made this great rabbi leave God, leave Jewish life? So this is from the Talmud in the Tractate of Kiddushin. This is a rather long text, so that's why I underlined the key moments, but maybe we'll meander through mm, at least most of it. Haresha Amarlo Aviv. Someone, okay, so the, the conversation before this is all about how if you do mitzvot, if you keep the commandments of the Torah, you, you are protected. You live a good life, you're protected from harm, and so on. And yet, hare, this, this is like, uh, despite this, so our translator, again, whenever we're looking at this translation, the bold words are the words that are actually in the text, and the non-bolded words are filling in to help us read the story. So despite this theory that you keep the Torah, you live a good life, there's this uh, terrible incident. Haresha Amar Lo Aviv, someone, a child, uh, whose father said, Ale labira vehaveli gozalot. Climb up to the top of this building, fetch me the chicks. And what do we have to do when we're fetching <clears throat> from a, a nest? We send away the mother bird as an act of compassion, so she doesn't have to watch her babies being taken. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Dispatch, I thought, meant kill. No, no. no. Just just send it away. Send it away. Dispatch. Send it, shoo it away. Right. Just letting more people into the Zoom from the waiting room. Okay. So, um, so the father said to the child, go up and fetch me the chicks. Uh, and, uh, and so the Alala Bira, he goes up to the top of this building, and sent away the mother bird, just as the Torah had commanded, and then took the young. So, uh, the English says, thereby simultaneously fulfilling the mitzvah of Shiloh HaKan, which is dispatching the mother bird from the nest, and the mitzvah of honoring one's parents. What's the significance? What's the connection between those two commandments? They are the two commandments that the Torah says, if you honor your parents, you'll have a long life. If you send away the mother bird, you'll live a long life. And now what's about to happen? <laughs> he fell and died. As he was coming back from fulfilling these double mitzvah, so the the story, even, even this is a mythical story, right? Whether it happened or not, the story is constructing a scenario like a perfect storm. The person fulfilled the two commandments, the only two commandments in the Torah where it says, you will do this, you'll have a long life. The Torah doesn't always even list a, a, a reward. For more often, usually doesn't, but here it does, and it's the same reward. It's the best reward. And he fell and died young. So the question is Where is the goodness of days and the length of days of this person? That's a direct reference to the, um, the, the Torah says. Um, that it should be good for you and long life. So where's his good life and his long life and his long days? So how is the Gemara going to answer this problem? That's the problem. Problem is that the words of the Torah aren't being upheld, aren't true. Ella, Ella is the answer. Rather, the verse, 
that it will be good with you means it refers to le olam shekulotov. It means the world where all is good. It doesn't mean this world. It means in the next world. That it will be, you will have long days, refers to le olam shekulo aroch, the world that is completely long. What did they just do? Thank you, Robin. I was just actually about to close the door. If you know how to make the owl work, that'd be great. But I'm going to keep teaching. If you can't, it's okay. I have to admit another person. There we go. And rationalized, it rationalized uh, how he could die. Yes, Sandra, right, right, right. It tried to make sense of how could it be that this young person died when he he deserved long life. So uh, it rationalized, it, well, but it didn't rationalize by saying something about him. What did it do? It gave a it explained away that explained away the the, the, the the verses in saying Olam yes. Hazet versus Olam Haba. Right. It, it, it reinterpreted the verses and it reinterpreted the outcome, the reward to say that your reward is not in this world. Your reward is in the world to come. We've talked about this now and then sort of theologically how the world to come can function. It can function as a way to answer a lot of our problems when we see. No, it doesn't. OK, thank you, Robin. Um, when we Robin, see that. Robin, that the, it's technically fine. It's what? Sorry. Every, uh, the video and the audio are fine. But do you see the uh, the owl? Can someone in the room say say something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Barbara, speak for Am a second. Am I being spotlighted now? No, you're not. So that's why the owl's still not on. Okay. Oh it's no, okay. but I can see and hear you fine, and I could see yes, the text. Yes. Thank fine. you. Thank you, Michael. We were just. Uh, I was just hoping that the, we could get the owl to work, which would allow you to see people around the room when they talk. That's okay. We'll accept good enough. Good enough is good enough. Anyway, um, yeah, so, okay, you don't see your, your, your reward in this world. You're going to see it in the world to come. But what does it uphold? It upholds the Torah truth. It upholds the Torah verse. When the Torah said you're going to have long life and then long life in the next world. When the Torah said it's going to be good for you, it's going to be good. That's where rewards happen. Okay. So the Gemara will ask now, um, you know what, in the part I, that I didn't underline, I'm going to just I read it in get, English. I'm I, sorry. I, now they changed that to text, but I still can't get, there's no, and that happened last night, I couldn't get a uh, voice. You're not hearing anything? She's struggling. I'm muting her, I'm muting her. Uh, I just also remembered, I didn't put this link in the chat. I'm gonna take a moment and do that so that anyone who's on the screen who wants to bring it up themselves can also bring up. Oh, that's the problem. It wasn't yeah. plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> Always a simple solution. If only I knew to look for it. All right. Our friends now have the Safari source sheet in their chat on the Zoom. And in a moment, we'll have the owl. All will be well. Thank you, Robin. That mean I should turn down in this screen. world. It's on now. It's on. I can yeah. see. Yeah. It's on. It's on. There's got to be some. So you're on. You're on. You're working now. Yeah. So say something. Oh, so am I spotlighted now? Can you can you see me now? No, it's not. No. No. Okay. Let's leave it. Let's leave it. Oh, it's wait. I could. Oh, that means it's, it it's now loading. it's now working. Oh, okay, great. Oh. Yes, yes, now it's you're on. good. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. You're okay. <laughs> okay, now is it working? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I see it here. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't show the, the view there because then you can oh, right, watch right, yourself right, right. and it's too much. Oh. Okay. But I can see it and they can all see whoever's around the room. So now I need now I know the owl needs to be plugged in. <laughs> plugged in. Who would have thought? <laughs> sort of like an arm. All right. So the Gemara asks. So I'm just going to keep moving along just in the English until I hit another underlying spot. The Gemara asks, but perhaps this incident never occurred. Right? It, it, it is possible that everyone who performs the mitzvot is rewarded in this world, or maybe the situation never happened. The Gemara asks to answer. Rabbi Yochanan himself saw this incident like this. The Gemara is going back and forth. Well, maybe 
maybe that person was thinking about sin at that time. That's what he was being punished for, his thoughts about sin. The Gemara says, but we don't get punished for, for thoughts. The Holy One, blessed be, he does not link a bad thought to an action. So that can't be. And then the Gemara asks, but perhaps he was thinking about idol worship. And idol worship seems to be an exception. We do punish for the thought of idol worship. That, that idolatrous thoughts can be punished. The Gemara answers, oh, Rabbi Yaakov was saying this as well. If it enters your mind that there's a reward for a mitzvah in this world, why didn't these mitzvah protect him so he should not come to contemplate idol worship? So it doesn't matter. They're doing Maybe it didn't happen. No, it did. Maybe he, this is why he got punished. No, it can't be. We're, we're trying to actually uphold the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem stands. Uh, okay, I'm actually I'm going to skip down a bit and go to the underlined part. Oh, see, this is where my friends on the Zoom are going to get stuck on. Uh, uh, okay, uh, I'm looking in the Hebrew. So I'm a Rabbi Yosef. Rabbi Yosef says. And in the booklet, I'm now on the English. It's the opposite side of our page in the booklet. This is where the English and the Hebrew don't always line up very well. So I'm staying in the Hebrew on the screen, but I'll translate it as we go. Rav Yosef said, Il male darshe acher lahai kra. If acher, acher, our friend Alicia ben Abuya, had interpreted this verse, here Rabbi Yaakov, like Rabbi Yaakov did, um, it says Rabbi Yaakov bar barte. Yaakov was the son of his daughter, so that's interesting. That Rabbi Yaakov was the grandson of Acher. This is sort of said parenthetically, but that interpretation that we had seen. Ah, I know how to uphold the Torah verse. It means rewards still do come. They come in the world to come. If Acher had interpreted the verse that way, lo chata, he would not have sinned. In other words, this was the source of Acher discontent. When he saw that someone who does mitzvot doesn't get rewarded, when this text of the Torah was not upheld, he left Judaism. He rebelled he come up with a better interpretation or a different interpretation, maybe he would not have sinned. And now the Gemara uses this as a sort of opportunity to ask the question, Acher my who? What was it that caused Acher to sin? Ika de Amre, some say that it was a case like this, that he saw a case like this. What was a case like this? Someone does the most important commandment and he, and he dies young. Even though it says the Torah, you should have a long life. And the Ika de Amre, and some say that it was another kind of sin. So uh, another kind of story. So now in the English, I'm going to read it in the Hebrew and then I'll show on the screen the English. Um, but in the English, we're going to keep going down and it's the opposite. It's the top now of the next page. So where it says, um, uh, there are those who say that he saw the tongue of speech. So this is a difficult story. But one of these um, scenarios where the, the, the Romans were torturing the righteous. So um, the, he, the uh, chutzpit hamaturgaman is the character that's being talked about here. The maturgaman was someone who was a great scholar who was able to be a translator of text. And he saw um, that that uh, the chutzpit meturgaman was being tortured by the by the government. So I'll read it in the Hebrew or it's Aramaic. Some say um, that it was lishna de chutzpit hamaturgaman chaza uh, that he saw the tongue of this righteous person that was it was. Um, cut off by the, the authorities and thrown into the street, to have a garirle and dragged through the street by davar acher, by something else, which as our translation says, is a euphemism for a pig. <laughs> Amar, and he said, Alicia ben Abuya said, Heshe hefik mar galiot, um, a mouth that produced precious pearls, 
Yilachech Afar would be dragged out in this, would, would, would be licking up uh, dust and immediately Nefak Chata, he left and he sinned. I'm just scrolling down so our, our Zoomers can see this in the English. Again, so he said, a tongue, a mouth that produced pearls will now lap up dirt. And for this reason, he left, he went out and he sinned. Notice the textual connection. What did they call a pig? Davar acher. Wait, meat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Other. But we don't even want to name it. And what did they name Elisha? Acher. Not too flat. He was, but he was so troubled by injustice. What What do these stories have in common? What what made Akhir leave? Either it was this young lad who goes up and does these double mitzvot and then dies, falls to his death, or it's this great scholar who is tortured. What does it have in common? Deep injustice. What else does it have in common? We're promised that this will lead us to goodness. We're promised that Torah holds with it good life, long life. None of this holds up. I'm leaving. What am I doing this for? You know what the problem with this is? This is the this is the classical tzaddik v'lava v'rasha v'toblo, and I don't understand why he thought that he had the answers, and why he thought that he, that he should, you know. I mean, this is a classical problem all through literature, all, all, all through Judaism. I want to say a few things. Um, first of all, we'll get eventually to a, um, a conversation about Job, about Eel. And, and that's significant because of what you're saying, because he left because of this, the biggest question we have on earth. <laughs> and it's an unanswerable question. Now, it's funny that you're saying, funny, I don't know, not funny. What made him think there would be an answer? Uh, I think the fact that he leaves and that the rabbis are naming that this is why he leaves gives him such kavod. Like this is a this is a worthy reason to leave. Uh, I have to say, you know, coming off of Yom HaShoah, coming off yeah. of remembering the Holocaust, we know that people experienced and people left. Uh, there's a wonderful uh, podcast I was just listening to. It's called Israel Story. And um, Israel story, they, they think of them themselves, I think, a little bit like this, this American life, but for Israel, they tell just stories about real people in Israel. They're, they're in the middle of a series that they, they paused this series for Yom HaShoah yesterday, but they're in the middle of a series where they're looking at, in honor of Israel's 75th, they're looking at all of the people who signed the Declaration of Independence, the Megillat Ha'atzma'ut, and each episode is interviewing their closest uh, living relative. You know, my father signed, here's what he thought about Israel. He was ultra religious. Another one, he was ultra secular. Here's what my grandfather thought. It's fascinating. Mm. But what they did yesterday was they 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 did an episode, they replayed it, the past episode, the Yom HaShoah episode. And it was uh, a stirring story of this woman who survived, lost everything. I'm not gonna go through the whole story. And she moved to Tel Aviv and she was part of a community of survivors. And the only time she ever went to synagogue was once a year on Yom Kippur. She went with a, a chicken and cheese sandwich. <laughs> and she yelled and said, God, you have to ask us for forgiveness. Who could blame this woman? Mm -hmm. Who could blame? It's a universal question. It is a universal Why question. Why do bad things happen? No. When she is such terrible, horrible, and this is you know, someone someone dragged through the streets, someone falling to his death. You know, that's what made Acher become Acher. So I wanted, I, I, I want to tell a story. It's not a story. Uh, I, I think you people know that the D family lost their two daughters and their mother um, right, right, right around Pesach. And, there's, and the family is sitting Shiva now. Yes. And yesterday at the Nihum of Elim, there were two men who came to pay their respects to Rabbi Leon and, and, and to the family. And he told them who he was. One was a paramedic and what was and, and, and one was an anesthesiologist. OK, and they they apologized for the fact that they couldn't they couldn't revise Lucy. And Rabbi Leon said to them, 
He said, you don't understand the mitzvah that you did. He said, by giving her those extra days, you were able to get her ready to the point where her body would be able to give five tormim to five individual people. Her lungs, you know, you hear this and you, you, you can't believe it. The man is sitting shiva for his wife and his two daughters. And what is he saying? He says, thank God you were there. You weren't there by, by accident. God put you there. And the fact that you were able to do a tracheotomy on her and to save her for those few days, get her to the hospital and get her to the point where she'd be able to to, to give those those the, those organs. Oh, that's I mean, this is a story. This man has, uh, I think his name is Rabbi Leo, actually. Yes, Rabbi Leo D. Uh, uh, he has shown an extraordinary yeah. leadership. Extraordinary. And, and no one could expect that of someone. No, going through that. That's why it's really beyond, beyond extraordinary. Wow. I can't believe that. Yeah, story. That's amazing. And it's true. It's hard to, that's hard to, uh, to, 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 to take in. She, and she was such a, um, a model. I know they, they were very adamant about publicizing, uh, you know, who she saved or the ages, right? The ages of this, she saved a, yeah, a, a, so. a 51 year old. She saved a 38 year old. She saved a, to show that um, donating organs is halakhic and should be done. Uh, wow. Yeah. And, and I want to say that if anyone, um, if God forbid Rabbi Leo D stood up tomorrow and said, I don't believe in the Torah anymore, no one would believe him either. And he, he wouldn't. wouldn't. Say that. Not he he wouldn't. I'm just saying, my point is that Sadiq Viralo has such power, uh -huh. Uh -huh. That, uh, you know, that bad things happen to good people. That's the title of that book. Uh, yeah. Rabbi yeah. Yeah. When bad things happen yeah. to yeah. good people. Yeah. It, it is the Kushner. eternal Kush, 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 yeah, Um uh it's the eternal question. I think that's why you have a novel like as a driven lead, you have it captures the imagination because everyone has this question. Every religion, every culture has to address this question. But, but didn't so he represents this question. But Alicia didn't Benzer. everything change after the Holocaust? The answer to that. You could no longer question it the way he did. After the Holocaust, everything changed. You can't say. So this is a Rabbi Yitz Greenberg thing. He says the covenant changed right. after the Holocaust. Well, the covenant we have with God is different. Yeah. I, I, I Bad things happen to a lot of good well, people. That's, that's why we had the book of Job. But yeah, I, I think this question is ancient. It is for us in our generation, it's the Holocaust question. Yeah, Don't you think right. it was the question right. of the Crusades? Yeah, I mean, don't you think it was the question the of massacres in York? Yeah, like, yeah. Please. You know, it's interesting in the novel, this rabbi who wrote it, Milton Steinberg. Yeah. Alicia, as a boy, when this happens, like, and he witnesses this, he has a he has a Greek tutor because his father mm -hmm. wanted him to understand the Greek language and rhetoric and all that. And this tutor talks to him about logic. And oh, nice. and so he start and 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 it's sort of you're you're meant to understand that his mind as a young person was already attuned to something that is the, the great divide between faith and logic, which appealed to him. And it's kind of so I, I want to say that um, I can't remember if I brought this text or, <clears throat> or not. Uh, some, another piece that Ahia represents is this question of. What happens if you're too immersed in Greek culture? And there's a text that says, even when he was in the Beit Midrash, he used to hum like Greek melodies. Mm -hmm. And if he would stand up, Greek books would fall off his lap. Right. <laughs> so there's a basis for this that, for the novel. Exactly. Oh. The novel is... is, is no, the novel is through the Gemara. The Gemara talks about that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. The Gemara talks about that if he stood up in the Beit Midrash, secular books fell off his lap. Right. So... The, but the reason it's mentioning that is maybe a warning. You see, you see what happens if you're too familiar with the other cultures, uh, with forbidden wisdom, you become like them. So that's, I, that's my, dangerous. My interest in this conversation is is not his life, but what his life represents in the right in the discourse. So first and foremost, it represents. What happens when we when bad things happen to good people? Either we can explain it a different way, or we fail to explain it and we hold the question, or we fail to explain it and we leave. That's out there. But but 
But I, I'm troubled by this rationalization because then it means that you, it would justify walling yourself off from the secular world and not learning. Right, um, right. And yes, yes. And some they, people make that choice, Sandra, as you know. Some people yes, make that the choice. the Haredi do, do yes. that. But I, I think that to modern orthodoxy, we should find that troubling. Yes. That yes. We, we, we need to wall ourselves. Yeah, a different solution. So I want to push forward and do one more text. And this is, uh, again, on this topic of what made Acher leave. <clears throat> so the Gemara stated earlier, that's where I'm now in Chagiga 15. Acher kitzitz banitio. This is the phrase where it says Acher um, became a heretic. He chopped down the saplings. Like he chopped down Torah at its core. I don't know, we could talk a lot about this metaphor of chopping down the saplings. That's the phrase used here. Um, and we're going to explore another option of what made him become a heretic. Alav hakatuv omer, with regards to him, to Acher, the verse states, al titen et picha lachati et besarecha. Don't let your mouth bring yourself to sin. Uh, so what was it that his 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 discourse or his thinking led his body, led himself to action, right? What was it? My he. What was it that led him to this heresy? So this is a more mystical answer. Chaza Metatron. So Metatron is one of these characters in heaven, uh, one of the chief angels. And Metatron is given powers by God. So it's important to know that there's God and then angels are beneath God. But Metatron was given some kind of level of authority that, that Rabbi Elisha ben Abuya got a peek at. The it yahiva le reshuta, that uh, he was given permission, lemetav to sit, lemichtav to write, Zarfot de Yisrael. That's the word that's in Hebrew, zechut, merits. So that Metatron had some kind of job uh, that seemed like a decision maker. He was he was writing down these are the merits of the people of Israel, and so he said, Amar, Gemire dilimala la have la yeshiva velo tachrut. There's a tradition that in the world above, there's no sitting, there's no competing, velo oref, velo ipui, there's no turning one's back before God, um, that everyone faces God, that everyone answers to God, everyone meaning all the heavenly beings, and no um, lethargy. Because God forbid, it would look like there were two authorities. So um, what it's saying is that usually no uh, no being can sit before God, can compete with God, can turn their back to God. To, um, I don't know what the lethargy piece is. Maybe Becky knows what this lethargy thing is about. No, uh, uh, but that, you know, nobody can challenge God. No one's at the same level of God. And uh, why? Because if those if so, those things would happen, if anyone was sitting next to God or turning their back to God, any one of these angels, it would look like there's Shtei Rishuyot, two authorities, two, not just one God, but more than one authority in heaven. And that is what Acher saw. And that is what uh, led Acher to heresy. He saw Metatron imbued with a little too much power. And he thought, oh, there's more than one God. There's more than one heavenly being there's maybe the the Greeks were right then there's a poly uh, theistic universe and so then once so in the English you can see a lot of this built in right such thoughts led Acher to heresy so then the narrative the narrator of the Gemara says after that happened they kind of reduced Metatron so that no one else would think what Acher thought that Metatron had such power so that's where we go here, just kind of an aside. They like zapped Metatron with 60 pulses of fire so that no one else would make the mistake that Acher made. 
60, we said before, is like a round number, like a million, a, a hundred, right? Then they reduced Metatron. Um, so now we're going to have another uh, conversation with, with the angel. Um, so I think, okay, let's read it and then, and then we'll sort of theorize what's going on. Here. They said to the angel Amrule, my taima, what's the reason? Ki chazite la kam, sorry, ki chazite la kamt mikame, that when you saw Elisha ben Abuya, you didn't stand up for him. Despite this conduct, since Metatron was personally involved, he was granted permission to erase the merits of Acher and cause him to stumble in any manner. That um, that Elisha Ben Abuya had all these merits in addition to all of his sins, but when he sinned. Metatron had the authority to erase all of the merits. And that's why when, when I, I think what this means, that's why when Elisha ben Abuya showed up in heaven, nobody stood for him. He didn't have any merits left. He had nothing. And it goes on, like really this is the, the punchline almost, um, uh, that uh, a divine voice, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. A divine voice comes out and says, Shuvu banim shovavim. Everybody, all of my children should repent, should return. Return, you rebellious children, except Acher. Chutz ne Acher. He has no more hope. Acher so sinned that we erase his merits, we erase his options to return. He was canceled. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't even call him. Tough love, him. tough love. Whoa. <laughs> and and then so then upon hearing this, so of course <laughs> Alicia Benabuya, he's so great. He he even hears this, Alicia Benabuya, and says, "Since Amar Ho'il ve'itrid ha'hu gavra me'ha'hu alma, since I've been banished from that world, he calls himself that man, ha'hu gavra." Since I've been so banished from the world to come, there's no hope for me. I have no more merits. I have no more hope for tshuva. I may as well just live it up. I may as well enjoy this world. So then what does he do? <laughs> I, I may as well go out and enjoy this world. And so Acher really went astray. So I want to say it's a chicken and egg thing. He sinned, but then they pushed him away some more. And then they said, you can't come back. And so he said, all right, I sinned. But then it, the whole thing is so far gone that I'm going to sin some more. And who does he go? He, go, he goes to a prostitute. Who is well? Yeah. Let's just finish it. He went astray with Tarbutra to evil uh, culture or actions. Nefak. He left. Ashkach Zona. He found a prostitute. Hava. He hired her. Amrale. And she, the prostitute, says to him, What are you doing here? You <laughs> love Elisha ben Abuya? Aren't you Elisha ben Abuya? What, what are you doing at my door? Akar Pugla Mimeshra the Shabbat. He walked over and and harvested a radish from the patch on Shabbat via mm Havla -hmm. and handed it to her. What is he trying to say to her? I don't keep Shabbos anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm not that righteous man anymore. And so she said, Abra, Acherhu, he is something else now. Who names him Acher? The prostitute. Wow. The prostitute, the prostitute. Okay. gave him that name. Okay. Woo. Woo. All right, so what have we seen in this text? <laughs> We've seen uh, that Acher has secret knowledge, which was, was what I opened with, right? That he, he could see behind the curtain. He could see Metatron. Because of his secret knowledge, he sees something maybe he shouldn't have seen. He interprets it maybe in a way he shouldn't have interpreted it. 
and he thinks God is not alone as the one God, and he rebels. We see this conversation. Oh my gosh, Metatron, get down. No, we don't want anyone else to end up with Acher. And and the angels, they they reject Acher, and the pe even God rejects Acher, and he's so far gone that he says, Now I reject myself. And he says, Habu Gabra, that man. And now who does he go see? A prostitute. And the prostitute christens him, so to speak, <laughs> with his new name. Hmm. Hmm. Who's the they? Yeah, so I'm a little, I'm, I'm, the they, I think, they said that. to the angel. They removed the So I think they yeah. is the heavenly they. Oh, that sounds so There's a whole community up there. The angel? Yeah. 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 I'm just wondering about how Unless is. anyone has a better, uh, a different idea. Uh, the, the word, the word sovavim, when it says suhu banim sovavim, it's very interesting because that's what we call the six parsiot in, in Sefer Smot. And we say that people fast dafka on, on, on those Thursdays. We're talking about Smot, Ve'era, Bo, B'Shalach, Yitro, and Yatim. I'm wondering if that's, you know, if that's part of it, because that's exactly what he says. The suhu banim sovavim, which is exactly what... Teshuva, right? Fasting right. is teshuva. And so you're suggesting, sorry, say again, what are you suggesting? That because they're using this particular term, maybe the, yeah. maybe that's why we call these parsiot sovavim. Maybe it comes from the Dafka. This, this, so they, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, it's about teshuva. Fasting is about teshuva. Right. And these six parsiot are supposed to be, you know. teshuva. Right. Which is which is interesting anyway. because if that was the case, I don't know why why Alicia Benavuya would have thought that he was not part of, you know, this possibility of being but, a, but the Talmud redeemed. Says that. But the Talmud says Talmud says that he was not included apart from a right. um a It's the it's the yeah. bat It's the heavenly. It's the bat call. We don't we don't, but we don't listen to the bat. But we don't listen to the bat call. We know that. <laughs> so I don't but know. He's, he's like reject. He's so rejected. Right. He's What's rejected. the um, I mean, and you're you're referring to other places where we say, ah, butt out, bot cold. But I don't. But it's but not cold. every not every story in the Talmud has to be consistent with each other. Right. And here right. it says specifically, is may a the heavenly voice is an authority. You know what it says? I I just <laughs> you know. I don't so, know. Okay. Rabbi Mayer, until the end of his life, tries to bring him back. Yeah. So whose fault? So whose fault is it that Acher left? Whose fault is it? Everybody. It, it could everybody. be society. They didn't accept it's him. Community. It's he, but he also is refusing. You know, he's pulling himself farther and farther right. away. Right. Right. But, but we're going to see that he keeps teaching and keeps. You know, he keeps hovering at the fringes of the community. He keeps... But Shem, Shem doesn't even intervene. He doesn't intervene. God doesn't yeah. intervene. And that bothers me also. Because this is a specific case right. where the Mitatron, if, so I if think Alicia sees him sitting there, going, God... A lot of what's going on here is that Alicia Ben Abuya remains a sympathetic character. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's very tortured. He's and someone him. we can relate to. That we we're rooting for him. The only, the only voice he hears is the prostitute. Is the is the prostitute? It, yeah, that's the only person who, like, along the way. Oh. Yeah. That seems like he, he well he hears the mission. What do you call it? The Met Metatron. This, yes, this, yes. This. But nobody or no 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 force comes to say, even though this is happening, why don't you? Try another way. So the the comment on the Zoom I want to just acknowledge is that that it, it was a passive aggressive that it was his it was his fault on some level or it was his um, it is his fault on his some decision. Way. I mean I I yeah I, th I think that's what we struggle with this question. Yeah, but I yeah. struggle I struggle with the Metatron. Why is he given so much power to do what he did and nobody ever realigns that power 
because if it was, then Alicia Ben Abuya probably would so, not. Uh, go actually, to I want to I want to bring this one other text. I almost forgot this very small text after this. Um, thank you. The, the, another comment, Betsy, uh, in the chat, he was an example of what happens if you leave. Right. The, 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 it's a warning of the dangers of when you leave community and you're rejected by the community because you left the community, but you left because you were rejected. And people who live in the Haredi community very much feel this, that um, tension. Just look at the, the, this one other little excerpt from Hagiga, the next text, Hagiga 16. So on our um, uh, paper, you have to go to the next page. Uh, Aliga 16, where it starts by saying the Gemara asks, what verse did Rabbi Akiva expound that prevented him from making the same mistake as Akher? So what it's asking is, who else do we know who had this access? <laughs> this access to the secrets of heaven, who must have also seen Metatron sitting on this place of honor. And what did, how was Rabbi Akiva um, protected? How was it that he maintained his righteousness? So the way the Gemara asks it is, what verse did he use to bolster his faith or to interpret differently? Um, and by the way, that was also with the other story where we said this young person died and we had to find a different way to interpret the text to uphold our righteousness. So what verse, my darash, what verse did Rabbi Akiva expound that prevented him from becoming like Acher. Amar uh, Rabbi Barchana, Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Chana says the name Rabbi Yochanan. It was he came from the holy myriads, the Ata Merivavot Kodesh. It's a verse, kind of a random verse, out of context, which is what we sort of play with anyway. Um, but he explained instead of the Ata that God came among the myriads. Rabbi Akiva said it means God, he is ot he barivavashalo. He is unique among the myriads of angels. So it acknowledges there are going to be other beings in heaven. And whatever you see in the myriads in heaven, don't worry, God is above them. Rabbi Akiva chose to look at what he saw and see it differently. He saw a Metatron, he saw a very powerful angel, but he never mistook him for another god. Do they ever compare Aher to Job? So Job will come up in interpretation and conversation with Rabbi Meir. I don't think they explicitly compare him. Not that I know. So I'm thinking he's so much more and that you you connect to him. I, I personally yeah, find you have so much for yeah. him. Yeah, I'm just seeing another. Yeah, chat. but Job kept his faith. Job didn't yeah. didn't leave his Metron faith. Is produced in authority and power. Yes, Michael, but only after Acher. It's too late for Acher when Metatron is 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 reduced in his power. What's that, Becky? I said that Job never lo lo lost his faith. There, that he, it's not like the Acher at all. I mean, yes, there, there was an angel that tried, but he didn't succeed. Job didn't the whole lose his faith. That Job is and insists and insists on his righteousness. He says, I didn't do anything right. wrong. I'm righteous. But Job, things happened to him. Acher didn't happen to him. He's just, he's looking at what happened to others and yeah. saying, this is wrong. You know, Right, that's true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on one level, that's a good thing that he cares about the others. <laughs> no, no, it's good. He's, yeah. so sensitive. he's empathetic. He's, yeah. empathetic he's such sure. a sensitive soul yeah. that he uh -huh. can't handle injustice. That's right. You can't square that. A lot of our faith. youth are feeling that way now. Yeah. And how do we get them back? Well, I mean, I think we have to teach them these texts and say, this is very real. That people feel this way. Mm -hmm. But Alicia Ben Abuya is not stricken from the record. No, that's a good thing. I'm He's, thinking of Jesus. With what you just said, oh, just a lot of people, Jesus, you know, I remember in a class years ago, that they're showing us things where maybe the rabbis were a little harsh with the pushing mm. that way. <laughs> and you think of what, my God, how it could have been different. Right. But I mean, my, my understanding of the historical Jesus is that he never left. His followers. No, he didn't leave. His followers left. 
right? Okay. That's right. Yeah. That's uh, the idea of the Last Supper was Pesach. Yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. He was, he was a rough. <laughs> Um, I had a black oak. <laughs> so what we're going to look at next time, I know, very in our next yeah. class, we're going to look more closely at the relationship between Alicia Benabuya and Rabbi Mayer, who maintained their relationship even after he became on there. They maintained their, their relationship and their discourse, even their Torah. This so Acher, Acher, Alicia Benabuya was not put in Cherem then. He was, if Marby Mayer kept not, a relationship. He's not in Cherem. He is more, so that's Rabbi Eliezer Ben Azariah, as he put in Cherem, I believe is the one maybe you're thinking mm -hmm. of. But he's called Acher. But, he, but he, I mean, there's, that's the story we're going to see is where he rides by on his horse on Shabbos. <laughs> and they say to Rabbi Mayer, eh, your Rebbe is outside. Go say hi to your Rebbe. <laughs> That's the story that Ruth Calderon is going to pick up. That's where we're headed next time. Um, so they still call him his Rebbe. He still respects and talks to him, but he's riding on his horse on Shabbos. And on Yom Kippur, he's riding. I'm like, there's all this crazy stuff. So but he but, he's it's very, but, it, but it's very interesting that even though he's left Judaism, quote unquote, when it comes to, you know, the Tchum of Shabbat, he says yeah, to Rabbi Meir, that's it. You can't go anymore because this is the Tchum. And Rabbi Meir says, how do you know that? And he said, I've been counting the steps yeah, and yeah, as far yeah. as you can go. So, so that's, I mean, it defies definition, this character. It's so fascinating. It's, it's like someone who left religion, um, but when they go to their parents' house and they see their mother is using the butter instead of the margarine, they say, wait, wait, wait. It's chicken soup. Yeah, you can't use butter in that. Yeah. <laughs> You took the wrong thing out of the fridge. Well, you can take you can right, take, that's the character we're dealing with. You it's can so take the person out of the religion, but you can't take the but that they care about it still for their religious yeah. family. So anyway, we're gonna pause here. This is I this is what I wanted. That so this class is this was Alicia. Why did he leave? And now really the question is why did he stay a little bit? Mm. We're not that. gonna have class mm. next week. No. It's Yoma Maut. We're gonna be waving our Israeli flags yeah. wherever <laughs> you are. Um, and thank you for this this chat. Also, yes, we still appreciate the. It's so interesting that we still appreciate the art and literature of the people we don't respect. Right, we might uh, appreciate them even if we don't agree with them. It's a huge shriek. He's huge. huge. The huge. other isn't that the theme of the day? The other and how we're oh, all well, trying. That's a, yeah, the other. So this is so. actually not cancel culture. Yeah. Or the quest the question. The question is on the table. How much do we cancel him? It is it is on the table. Yeah. I yeah. got that book that you mentioned, Put God Second. It's very interesting. Which one? Put God Second. By Put God Second. Her oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So that yeah. that has a lot of the elements. Right. It, it resonates here. Yes. Um, yeah. Don't be such a fanatic that you forget your surroundings. And and, your and you yeah. can still be a good Jew. Even if your faith in God wavers, or mm -hmm. if you have, I mean, this is a very this was this was like Mordecai Kaplan's whole thing was that that uh -huh. God is um, it's not relevant. It's it's whether you have a strong belief in God or any belief in God.